In today's video, we are going to explore Jean de la Bruyere quotes about masculinity, manliness, and weaknesses. Let's get started. A man's worth is estimated in this world according to his conduct. A blockhead cannot come in, nor go away, nor sit, nor rise, nor stand, like a man of sense. A guilty man is punished as an example for the mob, an innocent man convicted is the business of every honest citizen. A man is rich whose income is larger than his expenses, and he is poor if his expenses are greater than his income. A man must be very inert to have no character at all. A man must have very eminent qualities to hold his own without being polite. A man of moderate understanding thinks he writes divinely. A man of good understanding thinks he writes reasonably. A man of variable mind is not one man, but several men in one. He multiplies himself as often as he changes his taste and manners. He is not this minute what he was the last, and will not be the next what he is now. He is his own successor. A man often runs the risk of throwing away a witticism if he admits that it is his own. A man only goes and confesses his faults to the world when his self will not acknowledge or listen to them. A man reveals his character even in the simplest things he does. A man starts upon a sudden, takes pen and paper, and without ever having had a thought of it before. Resolves within himself, he will write a book. He has no talent at writing, but he wants fifty guineas. A man who has schemed for some time can no longer do without it. All other ways of living are to him dull and insipid. A man who knows how to make good bargains or finds his money increase in his coffers thinks presently that he has a good deal of brains and is almost fit to be a statesman. A man who knows the court is master of his gestures, of his eyes, and of his face. He is profound, impenetrable. He dissimulates bad offices, smiles at his enemies, controls his irritation, disguises his passions, belies his heart, speaks and acts against his feelings. A modest man never talks of himself. A party spirit betrays the greatest men to act as meanly as the vulgar herd. A pious man is one who would be an atheist if the king were. Discretion is the perfection of reason and a guide to us in all the duties of life. It is only found in men of sound sense and understanding. A vain man finds his account in speaking good or evil of himself. A wise man is not governed by others, nor does he try to govern them. He prefers that reason alone prevail. An egotist will always speak of himself, either in praise or in censure. But a modest man ever shuns making himself the subject of his conversation. As long as men are liable to die and are desirous to live, a physician will be made fun of, but he will be well paid. Eminent station makes great men more great, and little ones less. False glory is the rock of vanity. It seduces men to affect esteem by things which they indeed possess, but which are frivolous, and which for a man to value himself on would be a scandalous error. False modesty is the masterpiece of vanity, showing the vain man in such an illusory light that he appears in the reputation of the virtue quite opposite to the vice which constitutes his real character. It is a deceit. I am not astonished that men who lean, as it were, on an atom, should stumble at the smallest efforts they make for discovering the truth. That, being so short-sighted, they do not reach beyond the heavens and the stars. To contemplate God Himself. If it be true that a man is rich who wants nothing, a wise man is a very rich man. It is difficult for a proud man ever to forgive a person who has found him at fault and who has good grounds for complaining of him. 
His pride is not assuaged till he has regained the advantages he lost and put the other person in the wrong. It's motive alone which gives character to the actions of men. It is the glory and merit of some men to write well and of others not to write at all. Laziness begot wearisomeness, and this put men in quest of diversions, play in company, on which however it is a constant attendant, he who works hard, has enough to do with himself otherwise. Let us not envy some men their accumulated riches, their burden would be too heavy for us, we could not sacrifice, as they do, health, quiet, honor and conscience, to obtain them, it is to pay so dear from them that the bargain is a loss. Lofty posts make great men greater still, and small men much smaller. Man makes up his mind, he will preach, and he preaches. Men fall from great fortune because of the same shortcomings that led to their rise. Most men spend the first half of their lives making the second half miserable. Nothing more clearly shows how little God esteems his gift to men of wealth, money, position, and other worldly goods, than the way he distributes these, and the sort of men who are most amply provided with them. Party loyalty lowers the greatest men to the petty level of the masses. Politeness makes one appear outwardly as they should be within. Profound ignorance makes a man dogmatic. The man who knows nothing thinks he is teaching others what he has just learned himself. The man who knows a great deal can't imagine that what he is saying is not common knowledge, and speaks more indifferently. Some men promise to keep your secret and yet reveal it without knowing they are doing so. They do not wag their lips, and yet they are understood. It is read on their brow and in their eyes. It is seen through their breast. They are transparent. The best thing next to wit is a consciousness that it is not in us. Without wit, a man might then know how to behave himself, so as not to appear to be a fool or a coxcomb. The generality of men expend the early part of their lives in contributing to render the latter part miserable. The great slight the men of wit, who have nothing but wit, the men of wit despise the great, who have nothing but greatness. The good man pities them both, if with greatness or wit they have not virtue. The nearer we come to great men the more clearly we see that they are only men. They rarely seem great to their valets. The same amount of pride which makes a man treat haughtily his inferiors, makes him cringe servilely to those above him. There are some men who turn a deaf ear to reason and good advice, and willfully go wrong for fear of being controlled. Men regret their life has been ill-spent, but this does not always induce them to make a better use of the time they have yet to live. To what excesses do men rush for the sake of religion, of whose truth they are so little persuaded, and to whose precepts they pay so little regard? There is nothing men are so anxious to keep, and yet are so careless about, as life. I am told so many ill things of a man, and I see so few in him, that I begin to suspect he has a real but troublesome merit, as being likely to eclipse that of others. It is very rare to find ground which produces nothing, if it is not covered with flowers, with fruit trees and grains, it produces briars and pines. It is the same with man, if he is not virtuous, he becomes vicious. Nothing is easier for passion than to overcome reason, but the greatest triumph is to conquer a man's own interests. Please let us know your favorite quotes, from these Jean de la Bruyere quotes about masculinity, manliness and weaknesses, in the comments section. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel.